Um, for those who can jump on today, uh, we welcome you. For those who are watching the rebroadcast of this, maybe here on Facebook or by the website of Remnant Revival Ministries or by YouTube, we welcome everybody. If you're new to the site, whether here on Facebook Live or YouTube or whatever the case may be, please let us know under the comments below. Let us know that you are new to the site and we want to welcome you. Uh, just give us a little wave emoticon or just type in I'm new or whatever the case may be so we can acknowledge you. So let's get into this thing, guys, real quick. I want to show you, I want to talk about four major attributes of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Four major attributes of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Acts 1 8. I'm going to be reading from the New King James uh, and this is what it says. But you shall receive power after that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So let's, I want to pray real quick. Father, we thank you for your word today. I pray that this word would go forth and it would be impactful to the lives and the hearers and the listeners today that are, uh, to, that are receiving this word today. I pray that you would anoint this word, that you would confirm this word by signs, wonders, uh, and miracles, Lord God, that Lord, the, the power of the Holy Spirit would invade the lives and the listeners of those that are watching uh, via by YouTube, by Facebook Live, and wherever they're watching today, and whenever they watch this, I pray that it would be con confirmation to their spirit, and that there would be fruit that would be bore from this message. Your word said that you were your word would not return void, but it would quicken, establish, and prosper that what is sent forth to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So number one, if you're taking notes, uh, again, four major attributes of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Number one, the first thing that happens when we receive, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit is we receive boldness to proclaim or to preach the gospel. Again, number one, you will receive boldness to preach or to teach, or to present, to uh, to share the gospel. In Acts 1.8, it says you will receive power, dunamis power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me. So the first thing that happens is, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it takes the coward out of you. It takes the timidity out of you and it puts in you a bold lion. It puts in you courage. It puts in you strength. It puts in you supernatural believing faith to step out and to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Mark 13, 10, 11, it says in the gospel, and this gospel must first be preached to all the nations, but when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate on what you will speak, but whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that, for it will not be you that will speak, but it will be the Holy Spirit that speaks through you. Come on, aren't you glad for the power of the Holy Spirit? It says, in, I love this, in Proverbs 28, 1, it says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as, as a lion somebody say that with me say the the righteous are as bold as a lion i want to show you this as an example to the life of peter i want to show you pre-baptism of the holy spirit and i want to show you post-baptism of the holy spirit same man with different results the pre-peter before the baptism of the holy spirit is a man who denied Jesus Christ before men. He was a man that swore. He was a, he, uh, he, he, uh, he used language. He said, I blankety blank don't know the man when they asked him. Number three, he hid with the other disciples when pressure came, when persecution came, and when it was going to cost him for something for uh, for. Uh, uh, for following the Lord. But something happened after Acts chapter 2. When Acts chapter 2 took place, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit was poured out in the upper room, 
your Bible says that it was the same man who denied Jesus before men, this cussing saint, and this man who hid with the other disciples, this same man rose up after that the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the, in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Peter stood up, raised up his voice, and preached the gospel, resulting in 3,000 souls being saved. Oh, come on, I'm telling you, friends. Listen, uh, I'm telling you, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit can take the coward out of you, and it can take timidity out of you. It could take the shyness away from you, and the person that everybody once knew, the person that they were acquainted with, the person that they had a relationship, the person that they understood to be that was one thing. Come on, once the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens in their life this same person is no longer at that same individual they now have a boldness they had they now have courage and they now will stand up and they will proclaim openly that jesus christ is lord with power signs wonders and miracles to confirm it this same peter that was hiding behind closed doors in fear was the same Peter that took John with him on the in the hour of prayer at the temple and saw a lame man lying there that was that laid there daily at the temple begging for alms and said silver and gold we have none but what we do have we give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he did it openly in front of everybody. And when even the religious and the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they questioned him, they cornered him, and they began to ridicule him before, for what he did. He began to say, should we fear God or should we fear men? But let it be known unto you this day but it was that it was not by our own power or by our own strength that this man is able to walk today but it was the name of jesus the name come on it was by his name only shall you see what took place today peter along with john were arrested they come on they didn't run from the gospel they ran to the gospel and they were arrested for preaching the gospel they were put in prison, but 5,000 were added to the church from their experiences and from their example to the early church. What am I talking about? I'm talking about you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will receive boldness to preach the gospel. In Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 14, it tells us, that Peter stands up filled with the Holy Spirit and says to these to the rulers and the people and the elders of Israel, he says, quote, if we this day are judged, judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. And the Bible says in verse 13, and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, I said when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. One of the main indicators that you and I have been with Jesus, that we've had a real genuine encounter with Jesus, that we've really experienced the presence of God and an encounter with God, that our lives are truly transformed is by our witness. Come on, our witness and by our testimony. I'm telling you, come on, your old drug buddies that you used to hang with, your own party friends that you used to hang with, come on, your family that knows you very well your spouse that knows you really well when they begin to see that you don't lie like you used to when they see you you don't used to you don't steal anymore like you used to you don't swear you don't cuss you don't backbite you don't gossip you don't slander you don't do people wrong anymore you have love that's emanating out of you that you never had before and possessed before you used to never want to talk about religion but now everywhere you go and everything you do Jesus is on the the, 
on the tip of your tongue. It comes forth from your mouth like honey and you're witnessing and preaching and teaching the gospel everywhere you go. You're not timid about it. You're not, come on, you're not a coward about it, but you boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. I'm trying to tell you, friends, that people will know that you've been with Jesus, not based upon your education, not based upon your uh, uh, upon your experience or your knowledge, but it will be based upon your boldness that you have about you to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that brings me to the second point, and that is number two. The number two major attribute that we receive when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit is we receive a prayer language. We receive a personal prayer language that comes straight from heaven. That, that was proclaimed, that was promised by Jesus himself. He said that it's expedient for me to be crucified and to go away. And because when I go into the Father, I will send you the paracletos, the comforter, the one to come alongside. And when he comes... He will not speak of on his own accord, but he will speak that which he hears from the Father. He will show you things to come. He will lead you in the way of truth. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it said, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. And the Bible says they appeared to them, it appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and it set upon all 120 of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I said as the Spirit gave them utterance. This was not because they were bilingual, bilingual and they were speaking another language of, the, of, the, of a known dialect that everybody understood. They were speaking a supernatural heavenly language and the Bible says the Spirit gave them utterance. If this was something they could do on their own accord, the Spirit didn't need to give them utterance. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, you can turn there and read it in your own time. It says, when we know not what we ought to pray, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities. And we begin to come on. It says with groanings and utterances that cannot be uttered. It says the spirit prays with us. He prays for us. And the Bible says, and he who knows the spirit searches the heart of man and he knows the will of God. Come on, that's Romans 8, 26, 27. Jude says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. And he says, and pray always in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul talks about praying in the Spirit. He talks about praying in tongues. He said, don't forbid it. He said, don't restrain it. He said, don't don't grieve it. Don't quench it. Don't vex it. He said, I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than you all. He said, Paul told him, he says, when I pray in the spirit, I pray not with my understanding, but I pray in the spirit. I pray a heavenly language. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, Paul understood this. Paul received it and Paul practiced it. And Paul told us not to forbid it. He said, can I forbid living waters? I, in the book of Acts chapter 10 when Peter came I said when Peter came to the house of Cornelius he began to testify the words of life and while he was just speaking there was not hands laid on any man that day but while he was speaking the gospel while he was testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ your Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell upon all those that was in that room that day and they began to speak with other tongues come on somebody and the Lord was glorified. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not only do you receive boldness to proclaim the gospel, but you receive a supernatural heavenly language that comes straight from the Father. It comes straight from the Father. In Acts chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, it says they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? And there was some there that was mocking that they were full of new wine. They did it then, 
And they do it today. They still mock speaking in tongues. They still ridicule it. They still laugh at it. But I'm telling you, the same gift that was poured out on the day of Pentecost is still being poured out upon those that would receive it today. Mark 16, 16 through 18. Jesus said this. He said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. I said they will speak with new tongues. It means that they will speak in an unlearned tongue. This is not, come on, you don't learn how to speak tongues in a classroom. You don't learn how to speak it in a um, in some kind of an educational seminary class or some how-to seminar. I'm telling you, this is a heavenly gift. This is something that can't be caught. You can't... Um, there's, I'm sorry, There's some, this is something that can't be taught. It's got to be caught. Let me say that again. The baptism of the Holy Spirit can be, can be taught, but eventually it's got to be caught. You've got to receive it by faith. Jesus said in the, in the book of Matthew, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And Acts... Uh, let me go down here. In Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. Acts 19, 1 through 7. Here's what it says. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth. He was at Corinth. That Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And so they said to him, We've not even as much heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, We were baptized into John's baptism. And then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, listen to this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Did you hear me? They heard this. They never heard that there was such thing as the Holy Spirit. So that, that moment, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And the Bible says they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. And there was 12 of them in all. Come on, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, friends that the gifts of the Spirit are still available for today. He still wants to fill us today. He still wants to pour out today. He still wants us to be in operating in these attributes and be filled with, the, the Bible says, be not drunk in which, is, in which is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Greek context of that it means to be continually, not a one-time filling, continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So let me move on down here. I had some more stuff on this, but I want to uh, talk about this a little bit more. The prayer language, and you say, well, Brother Ricky, what's the purpose of speaking in a heavenly language? I'm glad you ask. Number one, it builds our faith. You can find that in Jude one twenty. It builds up your most holy faith. And what that means is to build up. It means to edify. It means to encourage. It means to equip. It means to energize. It means to recharge when you're l running low, when you're empty, when you don't, f you don't feel like you're at your fullness of the Holy Spirit. The, the life su has sucked it out of you. Your job, your career, your, your marriage, your circumstances, your kids. Come on, somebody. Your health, so, uh, the trials, tribulation. 
things like this suck the life out of you, sucks the energy out of you. It it pulls the anointing out of your life. So you've got to get in your prayer closet. You've got to get into a gathering of believers at your church or a Bible study or a gathering, a home group, or get alone with the Holy Spirit. Put in some praise music. Lift up your hands. Begin to cry out to the Lord. Begin to seek Him. And you'll begin to feel Him filling you right where you're at in a fresh feeling. So number one, it builds up your faith. Number two, it's used for intercession and intervention. Let me say that again. It's used for intercession and intervention. Come on. Again, Romans 8, 26 and 27. When we know not what we should pray about, the Spirit makes intercession for us. You begin to pray You give him an utterance. You open your mouth and you let the Holy Spirit begin to pray out of you and through you and you'll begin to home in on a circumstance that you need wisdom for. Lord, what should I, should I take this job? Should I not take this job? I don't know which direction should I go. Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I go? Should I stay? You begin to, and you don't know how you should pray about this circumstance. So you begin to intercede and pray in the Holy Spirit. You pray in the Holy Ghost until you get the, you, until you get the release, until you get the breakthrough, or until you get the answer. And the answer may come through uh, through a fellow telephone call. It may come through a word that you get in the word of God. It may come through a dream. It may come through a vision. It may come through a peace in your spirit or a circumstance or an open door. But you come on, you pave the way by praying in the Holy Spirit. And then you wait. Habakkuk says that he stood his ground and he waited to hear what the Lord would have to say. Okay. And, and again, it, it's used for intervention. The Holy Spirit, when you begin to, sp- to speak and when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Spirit can actually begin to protect you from circumstances that are unforeseen. I'll never forget one day, this was many years ago, I was going, it was a dark country road and I was traveling, going down the road, I was coming home and all of a sudden, I felt this Romans 8, 26, 27, this like groaning that cannot be uttered. It almost felt like uh, I, I could feel it building up in me, like I needed to pray immediately. And I began to pray in the Holy Spirit. I began to, to release my prayer language. I began to pray in the Holy Spirit earnestly. And about five minutes later, I was coming up. And right when I got done praying, I felt a release. And I stopped praying. And I came over the hill. And a car came within, I'm talking about feet, within literally a foot from hitting me head on. And it was almost as if something supernaturally pulled it over to the side of the road. I believe with all my heart, when that happened, I felt in my spirit that that the Holy Spirit knew what was about to happen. And He was interceding through me. And you say, well, I don't know if I believe that, Brother Ricky. Well, listen. It don't really matter if you believe it or not. It's the word of God. The fact is you have an intercessor that lives on the inside on the inside of you that prays to the father, the perfect will of God. And you have an intercessor that is seated at the right hand of the father. And that's Jesus. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus come in unison and they pray the perfect will of the father over your life. Remember when Peter was going to be sifted as wheat? Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. How how would Jesus know that? How would he understand that? Because he understood what we can understand from the book of Job. When Satan and, and, and the sons of God came before the throne room of God one day and they began to accuse Job and they had a target on his back, they had to get permission from the father before they could touch job and the same with peter come on satan went before the throne and said i desire to sift peter as wheat but jesus said i prayed that your faith faileth not he didn't tell peter listen he didn't tell peter peter um satan is coming after you and he's not going to be able to touch you he never said that because to be honest with you 
Peter went through a lot of trials. He went through a lot of tribulation. He went through a lot of heartache. He went through a lot of disappointment. He got into confrontations with other disciples. He, um, he rejected Christ. He turned away. He, he swore. He denied him around a campfire. So it's not like uh, he prevented every attack from happening. But Jesus said, I prayed that your faith faileth not. Golly. So the attack was all about the faith that Peter had in the Lord. And he, that his faith wouldn't fail. He didn't say, Peter, Satan's coming after your health, but I put a protection around you that he'll never touch you. He didn't say that. He said, I pray that your faith faileth not. In other words, when you go through the trial in your health, when you go through the trial in your marriage, when you go through the trial in your finances, he's not saying that he's going to keep you from having a trial in your health, keep you from a, a trial in your marriage, keep you from a trial in your finances. What he's saying is he's going to make sure, golly, that on the other end of this trial, that the faith that you have in that circumstance is going to become stronger than it ever has before so that when you come out on the other end of this thing and you know that come on your faith has been tried by fire and you come out on the other end of that infirmity you come out on the other end of the other end of that marital attack you come out on the other end of of that attack against your finances you can say you know what guys i can relate to you i was attacked in my finances but that's when i went through the fire went through the trial in my finances that's when i found out he was jehovah jireh golly when i went through the trial in my health it was then that i come out on the other end praising his name as jehovah rapha oh come on somebody i, I feel a preaching spirit coming on me see some of y'all ain't ever experienced that yet you don't know what it's like for him to be the fourth man in the fiery furnace unless you actually have to step in the fiery furnace you don't know what it's like for him to have to come and show up in the midnight hour and shut up some lions from trying to devour you unless you get put in the lion's den you don't know what it's like to to, to have to come on broken pieces and go on the other end and come out and get bit by a viper unless you're going to cruise in and try to sail ship to the other side you don't know what it's like to have to stand up and rebuke a storm unless you're willing to sail and get to the gathering so that you can deliver a man who's demon possessed oh I could just preach on and on and on here today but I'm trying to tell you friends that we have an intercessor on the inside of us you want you think come on some of y'all think that that praying the Holy Ghost is gibberish and it's a bunch of garbage and it's fleshly no there's a counterfeit for everything friends if there's a counterfeit if there's something fake I've come by to tell you that there's the real thing there's the authentic thing wherever there's counterfeit money there's real and there's authentic wherever there's a Judas come on where there's a Judas that wants to uh, that wants to portray you come on there's a John that wants to lay his his head on your chest and and tell you that he loves you and he's going to be there to the end where there's a Peter that's going to deny you and walk away from you there's there's a Thomas that's going to say, if he's going to go and be dead, let us go with him that where he is and he dies, we can die with him. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you today that there is an attribute of the Holy Spirit called the prayer language of the Spirit. And it's not just given to you so that you can say, oh, look at me or do or do show and tell in the church and boast of your gift. I'm trying to tell you that it's going to build yourself up. It's going to edify yourself in the presence of the uh, presence of the Lord so that you can get built up it's going to be your inner it's going to be your greatest intercessor it's going to be your uh, it's going to it's going to keep you from circumstances that could got you in trouble it can save your life come on and I don't even want to say it I'm talk, I'm talking about him I'm talking about him the Holy Spirit I meant to say it is in the prayer language but I you know what I'm saying here today Whew. Number three, that brings me to number three. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number three is that after we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we become a candidate for all nine gifts. And can I tell you, the prayer language of the saint is not even one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. You have nine gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 that are supernatural gifts that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the key 
that opens the door. But once you get in the door, there's nine gifts that are available for every believer out there if you earnestly seek them. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. John 16, 13 says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, that shall he speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. I'm talking about dreams. I'm talking about visions. How you think he's going to fulfill Joel chapter 2? He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they'll prophesy. They'll dream dreams. They'll have visions. I'm going to tell you how he's going to do it. He's going to do it through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's pouring out his spirit to speak to us in these last days. The Bible says that the Lord does nothing lest he first reveal it through his servants, the prophets. He's he's speaking through his prophets today. He's still speaking through the sons of Issachar today. He's speaking through the sons and daughters today. He's speaking through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know there's people that want to quench him. They want to vex him. They want to grieve him. And they want to run him off through unbelief. But I'm going to tell you, all those things can't resist Bible prophecy. Whether you deny it, whether you reject it, or whether you don't believe it, it's still happening today and it's going to happen until the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So number four, this leads me to my last point. Number four, the fourth attribute of the, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is it reveals a deeper understanding of the word of God. See, when you read the word of God, it's the logos. But when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you begin to read that same word, it moves from logos to rhema. It moves from a a logos, a written word, to a living word. A living word. Uh, You'll read a scripture that you've read for five, ten years. But then you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and you would go back and read that same verse and it was and it's like onions. It's like prophetic layers that get peeled back and it's a deeper understanding, a deeper revelation of the Holy Spirit, of the Word of God speaking through you. John 14, 26, it says, But the Helper, the Paracletos, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. Listen, when Jesus began to tell the disciples that they were going to suffer many things, that they would be reject, that he would be rejected, he would be ridiculed, he would be put to death, he would be crucified, but on the third day he would rise again from the dead. They didn't even understand fully what he was telling them, but something happened. They were, come on, Acts chapter 2, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, their eyes began to open. So truths to the scriptures, truths to the word of God began to, to, uh, to come alive like never before. Luke 8, 10, Jesus says, to you, it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Let me say that again, to you. And to I, it's been no, it's been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody needs to get excited for that. Did you know this word, the word of God is so filled with mysteries. It's so filled with raiment. Some of y'all say, well, I need a word, Brother Ricky. Well, come on, here's a word for you. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost and then open up your Bible and come on, the living word will begin to speak to you. He'll begin to reveal his plan for your life. He'll begin to reveal the word of God to your life. He'll begin to reveal truth to you. He'll begin to give you direction. He'll begin to speak to your life. He'll correct you. He'll edify you. He'll encourage you. He'll rebuke you if need be. But I'm trying to tell you that God's word will come alive. So again, these are four attributes that I wanted to share with you today of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Um, this I don't know why the Lord has had me on this recently on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, and this is probably what we're going to be talking about 
this weekend when I go back to Corden, Indiana, when I'm going to be preaching there in, at God's house in Corden, Indiana, uh, I was in, uh, in fact, I was in a, a Sunday morning service, or I, excuse me, I was in a Wednesday night service, and I was praying at the altar, uh, and, it's, and it's almost like it, I, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say, this is what I want you to preach on Sunday morning. I knew exactly what he meant. So he's had me on this thread recently on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So listen, some of y'all say, well, I can't get to the church in Corden, Indiana. That's okay, because right now where you're at, we're going to take a few minutes right where you're at. Listen, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care what denominational background you're in. I don't care if your mama and your daddy and your wife and your or your husband or your or church folks or some seminary told you that this is not for today or it's of the devil or it's been done away with or whatever the case would be. I don't care about all that stuff. I'm not worried about your unbelief. I'm trying to tell you that if you if you the Bible says he who comes to God must first believe that he is. And if and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you can take if you can take a few moments, guys, gals, whoever's watching this today, if you could take just a moment and you can use your faith, the same faith that you use to believe for your salvation. If you can use that, if you can muster up enough faith to believe what I'm trying to tell you today, that God wants to baptize you. In the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you can believe that today, then I believe right where you're at. Listen, if they can, in the word of God, in the book of Acts, they didn't have to lay hands on them. They simply spoke the word only. And the Holy Spirit of God fell on those who believed. So this is what I'm asking today. Right where you're at, if you're watching this by YouTube, watching this live by Facebook, watching this by the rebroadcasts, if you were invited in this broadcast, if somebody tagged you in this, whatever. If you're watching this right now and you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and this has sparked your curiosity or maybe you said, I've been seeking this for a long time and I just don't have it. Or you're saying, I want this. This is something I've been asking for. I want you right where you're at just to lift up your hands. If you can physically do that, if you're driving, pull over to the side of the road, put it in park, put up your hands, put them up there in the office, put them up in the living room, put them up there sitting on that couch in that kitchen, wherever you're at, lift up your hands. Look to the Heavenly Father. Don't look at Brother Ricky. It's not about me. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. The Bible says, if, again, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit? It comes from Him. We don't have to tarry for it. We don't have to wait for it because it's already been poured out on the day of Pentecost and it's still being poured out today. And it says, to all that may receive and to them that are afar off. That Greek word, to them that are afar off, it means to all perpetual generations that's to you that's to me that's to our children that's to anybody watching this today you can be a candidate to receive the baptism of the holy spirit just lift up your hands right where you're at i'm going to pray a prayer of faith and i want you to receive the baptism of the holy spirit why do i want you to receive this today so that you can be empowered to be a witness so you can have a prayer language so that you can build yourself up in your in your most holy faith so that you can be encouraged, so you, you can have an intercessor, so that God can speak to you through dreams and visions. Come on, somebody. And that, and that you can be a candidate for all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, supernatural gifts that He can use you to reach the lost in Jesus' name. Come on, throw your hands up right where you're at. Heavenly Father, you see every hand lifted up here in this broadcast today. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that your, your word does not return void. Lord, you're, you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. Father, I stand on the, the authenticity of your word. This is not something that I've conjured up. This is not my opinion, but this is the promise of your word you said this promise is for you and them that are far off so lord i believe every person of the sound of my voice lord 
they are a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If they're saved, if they're washed in the blood and their name is in the Lamb's book of life, you said that this gift is available for them. I'm asking, Lord, on the on the count of three, when I, when I begin to pray, I'm asking that you begin to fill these individuals from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, regardless of how old they are, how young they are, Lord, their denominational background, their ethnic, ethnicity, their color, their race Lord it doesn't matter to me Lord you don't care you said this gift is for all all that can come and freely drink may have a drink of the Holy Spirit so Father I'm asking as their hands are lifted today as their hands are lifted up I'm asking Father Lord right now Lord if there be any sin in their life that they begin to repent of their sins come on somebody begin to repent of your sins if there's anything that could block the flow of the Holy Spirit begin to repent of that just begin to say Father forgive me for gossip forgive me for lust forgive me for backbiting forgive me for my unbelief forgive me for the times that I've mocked this forgive me for things I've said things I've done anything that I've done to grieve vex or quench the Holy Spirit today I'm asking that you forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness that's the first thing we need to do today guys it's self-evaluation cleanse your heart get your heart with, right with God if you've never been saved you just confess Jesus Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me of my sins and come and come into my heart by the Holy Spirit and live in me and live in me right now in Jesus name. Come on, just make that profession right now. Just keep those hands up right now where you're at. Father, on the count of three, when I begin to pray, when I begin to ask that you begin to release this, I pray God that it begin to fall on your people in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Father, begin to baptize them now. Lord, Holy Spirit, I say come now. Holy Spirit, I say fall upon your people like you did in the day of Pentecost, like you did in the upper room. May it be as cloven tongues of fire falling upon upon those that are listening right now upon this broadcast. Lord, may it fall like fresh wind, fresh fire. Lord, may it be like a sound of a mighty rushing wind that blows into their office, blows into their vehicle, Vehicle, blows into the living room blows into the kitchen Lord you said out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water Lord let it bubble up God let them begin to open their mouth and begin to speak with a new tongue Lord baptize them with the baptism of the Holy Spirit I pray even now Father begin to fall upon them now Lord according to their faith of co- according to what they believe Lord I believe Lord God that people are receiving receiving today by the power of the Holy Spirit God I thank you that there is no barriers there's no restraints and there's no restrictions that Lord you can fall upon whomever whomever wishes and whomever wills to come and drink whoever comes come to the well come to the well of living waters come and drink of the Holy Spirit and those who would willing to receive today shall receive by faith and God I thank you hallelujah thank you Jesus come on and just begin to open your mouth begin to thank him thank him for the gift thank him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit maybe you're watching this today and you say I've already been baptized in the Holy Ghost but I need a fresh touch I need a fresh feeling come on just ask him Lord touch me with a fresh power a fresh feeling today come on come on don't get off your knees until you receive don't put those hands down to receive don't give up keep praying keep interceding don't listen just ignore me if if you're in the spirit just keep moving keep believing keep praying don't let let don't let me ending the broadcast bother you. even if we shut down the broadcast you keep praying you keep pressing in until you receive come on somebody you come on he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him hallelujah 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 Come on, I believe he's filling some people today. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill afresh, Lord God. Fill anew today, O oh God. Lord, uh, uh, in, uh, a renew today, encourage today, build up today. Lord God, I'm asking that you'd baptize, Lord, afresh, oh God. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I loose dreams and visions, Lord God, to be upon your people. Lord, may you unlock the gifts of the Holy Spirit, God. 1 Corinthians 12. May they be released upon them, unlocked in their lives, God. May they be made manifest as they seek those gifts. Not 
not for their own edification, but the edification of others, that others may be edified, that you may be glorified, God, and we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the honor. And it's in Jesus' name, oh God, we thank you today and we receive this today by faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, guys, listen, if you receive this today, Come on, just give him some thanks. Give him some glory today. It's not about me. It's not about our ministry. It's about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. If you've been, if maybe you got a fresh touch and a refilling today. Come on, give him some glory. Give him some praise today uh, and receive that today for your life. As always, guys, we, we appreciate you came, coming on here today and taking out the time of your schedule to be with us today for this, uh, for this, uh, I believe life changing message for many people that may watch this broadcast today. Uh, and if you've been blessed by this ministry guys, and you want to, uh, you want to follow us, you say, how do we follow you? Well, you go under Facebook live under follow RRM. That's remnant revival ministries. You're going to see a link there. Just click on, if you're watching this by YouTube, remnantrevival.org. You can also go to end time headlines, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. And that's going to be our information uh, arm. But this is our ministry arm here. If you'd like to support this ministry, if it blesses you, it encourages you, it edifies you, it equips you, or it informs you through our, our, our ETH page or both, and you want to know how to partner with, with, uh, with this ministry, guys, it's simple. All you got to do, again, on if your Facebook Live, just click right there where it says support RRM. Just click on that link. And it's going to take you to a link that's going to allow you to give electronically. Or you can, if you scroll down to the bottom, it's going to give you a physical mailing address for those who wish to give by check or by money order. You can give there, and that is, uh, you can either give to Remnant Revival Ministries or End Time Headlines. And the P, it's P.O. Box 2312 Clarksville, Indiana. And that's 47131. That is where you can support us by check or by money order uh, as well. Again, we thank you uh, for jumping on here to the broadcast today. Again, this Sunday morning, 1030 a.m., we will be at God's house in Corden, Indiana. We'll be with Pastor Tim and his flock there to, uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we will be ministering the Word of God there. I believe we're going to see a move of God. I really believe that. I'm going to be praying for that and interceding for a real touch and a real move of God there. So if you're anywhere in driving distance, please, we want to encourage you to come out. If you live in Ohio, Kentucky, Mississippi, uh, Indiana, anywhere within driving distance, we want to welcome you uh, to that um, to, to that service uh, that where you can join us. Um, let me see if I can pull up. I didn't have this in front of me, uh, but I want to see if we can pull up uh, the itinerary, the the address. Yes, here it is. It's God's Church, 3191. That's Old Highway 135 Northeast, and that's Corden, Indiana. So there's our. that's the physical location of this. Um, I'm going to put this on. I don't know why we didn't put this on. We're going to update this on our website, but we'll put that up there. It's also on our Facebook page, too, as guys, you guys on Facebook. You can see that on our RRM, Remnant Revival Ministries page. You can see that all that information is there as well. So, again, guys, we're signing off for today. Again, thank you for jumping on here today. Thank you for your support, your prayers, uh, and your partnership to this ministry. Um, we will either be back on here tomorrow. Uh, with a uh, looks like we're going to have to do an update. We got a lot of things going on with Iran. We got things going on with China that we need to discuss and talk about uh, from a prophetic perspective. So either tomorrow or we'll be back on here on Wednesday. So be looking for that and we'll be coming on here and that'll be from that live broadcast will be from end time headlines. So, uh, so God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.